Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the JP Football Podcast. I'm your host, of course, Josh. And well, this is going to be my match reaction to Everton's 2-0 away win against Brighton and Hove Albion at the Amex Stadium, an away game, couple goals, a clean sheet. Brilliant and and beautiful. You know, that's all I really have to say if I had to sum it up in a few words and solid as well. Um, you know, this is, this is the type of win and this is the type of game. Well, this is the type of win and these are the types of games that if Everton want to push for a European spot this season, finishing in the top six, seventh, I, I would even take seventh because if certain things go our way, if certain cups go our way, I'm pretty sure we can nab a European spot at seventh. If, 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 if certain things go our way, but again, if we want to push for European spot, because by the way, I'm just going to say this right after the match. Everton are not finishing anywhere near the top four in the Premier League this season. OK, the, the you know, Chelsea, United, City and uh, Liverpool are going to be the top four teams, you know, not it particularly in that order. It could literally go any way. But those are the four teams that are going to be finishing in the top four this season, which I truly believe and who will be, you know, qualifying for champions league spots but you know fifth and sixth again don't really see everything but you know, well maybe the sixth spot and seventh if things go our way but again like i'm saying guys these are the exact type of games whether they be home games or away games that everton need to win and if we put in performances like we did today we're going to be in europe there's no doubt in my mind we're going to be in europe you know this this squad that rafa benitez has been putting together and has been molding and the way we're attacking it's so much fun to watch it it really is fun football to watch and it's just it's great it's fantastic you know i don't know what else to really say about it you know i it's so good it's so nice watching everton do something like this and here's the thing right because we we didn't have a, a lot of the possession of the ball, you know, mo- uh, the, the Premier League games this season, you know, maybe other than the Southampton one, we haven't had a lot of possession of the ball. I think today's game, we only had 34, 35% possession of the ball. Brighton had the rest. But then again, when you're playing Brighton at Brighton Stadium home, which is by- the Amex, by the way, when I say the Amex, that's the name of Brighton Stadium. So when you're playing at the Amex, um, you're going to expect Brighton to have more possession than you unless you're a top four side like the ones i just named but you know and again graham potter he's got them organized for the most part they play nice football for the most part but again bryden doesn't really have any finishers do they they don't really have forwards that i mean bryden overall by the way no no disrespect to bryden but they just don't score very many goals okay i said i i've said this the past two videos neil mope yeah the forward, the striker, Brighton's number one choice at forward, yeah? Neil Mope. I think today proves why he would be an awful signing if Everton tried to get him as, like, a re- like even a replacement for Calvert-Lewin, okay? Neil Mope did absolutely shit fuck all today, all right? Neil Mope didn't do anything today. He had a couple chances. I'll give him that. He had a couple chances, but where did they go? Oh, over the crossbar. Oh, wide of Pickford's far near post. Neil Mope didn't do anything. And again, like I said, I, you know, yeah. I I think today goes, I I think today's performance from Neil Mope should help my case on why Everton should not get this guy and we should not be linked with him. Okay. Um, Yeah. But but before I start roasting Neil Mope some more, let's talk about, you know, the Everton side, the side, the team, my beautiful, lovely team at the moment who always gets my hopes up. And I really hope they don't let me down this season. Probably will. But for right now, we're going to stay positive because this was a very positive result early on in the game. You know, we didn't really get too into it. Brighton were dominating early on, but eventually things started to click for us. Things started to get, um, Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Things started to get interesting. You know, we were we were finally getting into the groove of things. Um, our starting lineup, by the way, consisted of Pickford and goal. Lucas Dean and Seamus Coleman were our left back and right backs. Like I thought I was very scared about the center back partnership. 
The two center backs I did not want starting this game started this game. Michael Keane and Mason Holgate started this game, and I was very, very scared. I thought that we would concede at least one or two goals. I was certain of it, but we didn't. Uh, so that was the four in the back. The four in the midfield, it was like a 4-4-2. Four, four, four in the midfield, you had um, – God, sorry, you had Townsend on one side, Damari Gray on the other, Allen and Ducore partnering in the middle, which, by the way – those two are forming a really, really good partnership. I'm liking the work that Decor is putting in. I am loving Alan and the things that he's doing. They are so key to our midfield. They are so key to our midfield and winning the midfield battles. Those two, yeah, excellent. And then again, Damari Gray, Andros Townsend, left mid, right mid, you know. And then our two strikers up front, without a doubt, Richarlison and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And Richarlison starting today, by the way. Him in the starting lineup, him being there for Everton, I also think goes to show there is no way in hell that he's going to PSG in the next couple of days. Ain't no way he's going to PSG. Moyes Keane, on the other hand, which we're going to get into, wasn't even on the bench. And again, we're going to get into Moyes Keane later after this match review. But anyway, so, you know, when we started getting into the game, we started looking more dangerous. We were creating chances. Uh, Townsend had a chance where he cut it back to his left boot. He shot it. He tried to go near post. Uh, Brighton goalkeeper makes a you know decent save, forces a corner. Um, and then, you know, uh, yeah, you know, we kept on from there. Brighton had, again, they had a few chances, but, you know, they don't score many goals, so they didn't really do anything with them. And then... The goal we scored, the opening goal we scored, Alan, 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 Alan. Beautiful, brilliant vision. He sees Damari Gray running. He picks him out. And then Damari Gray did what us Evertonians have wanted so many of our wingers to do over the years. He got the ball, receives it. He runs at the defense. He takes on defenders, runs at the defense with pace, a little bit of power, takes a touch when he gets to the box and just smashes it home with his left boot into the far, uh, into the far, well, looking at it from this side, into the far right, into the bottom right corner of uh, uh, the Brighton goalkeeper's net. Brilliant goal. Absolutely fantastic goal from Damari Gray. And again, this is what Evertonians love. This is what we love. This is what we want to see. We want to see our wingers forwards running at the defense taking shots like that even when it doesn't seem there's not too much room or you don't know you just take your shot and Damari Gray like he did last week against Leeds took his shot and it was it was put in the same corner pretty much he scores in pretty much the same corner he takes off celebrating much better celebration this time around again beautiful pass by Alan to set him up and Gray doing the rest and I was, I was so happy. I was going crazy. I was celebrating. I was cheering. And it was great. And then a couple minutes later, you know, Abdullah Decore, who, again, I want him as a midfielder to keep pushing up, keep helping us with the attack, because I think he has a really good quality. He's a really good engine in the midfield for our team. And, you know, Decore, again, he didn't. Obviously, his finishing wasn't at all that great today. It wasn't. But, again, the point is he's attacking. He's getting more involved with the attack. He's taking shots, you know, whether they be wide on He's taking shots. And Abdullah Decore had a chance right before the end of the first half when we had just scored, literally like a minute or two later. He has a chance, and, you know, he brings it down. He takes it. He shoots, and it goes wide. Now, I honestly, I was a little bit frustrated with Decore because when he got the ball, he should have laid it off for Damari Gray, okay? Damari Gray was open on that side, had decent space in him, and I think if he passes it to Damari Gray, Damari Gray has a really good shot and a really good chance at getting, you know, a goal, another goal and nabbing it. But it didn't happen. But again, uh, Decore, I'm sure, you know, you're just learning. You're going to pick that pass out next time. You know, Gray was a bit frustrated, but again, we're going 1-0 in at the half, and it was good. And going into the second half, you know, um, I kind of thought it was a little bit better than the first, actually. You know, we were getting a lot of chances. We're playing good football. We're shutting Brighton down, not allowing anything. By the way, Michael Keane and Mason Holgate today, again, I know the past couple, well, this past whole week, I've been slandering Michael Keane. I've been telling him off. But today, 
I have nothing bad to say about Michael Keane today. Michael Keane played very, very good today. He was in the right spots. He was making defensive clearances. He was, you know, forcing, uh, you know, forcing corners. So the balls weren't played into the boxes. He was good today. Mason Holgate was really good as well. Mason Holgate read the game beautifully today. He was reading the game really well. Same thing, getting in the right positions at the right times, getting in the right areas, clearing the ball. No, you know, no lackadaisical defending, no nonsense from both of them. They're getting rid of it, clearing. And yeah, they looked like a partnership today. Those two actually looked like a decent partnership today. So I'm proud of Mason Holgate and I'm really proud of Michael Keane because again, I have nothing bad to say about them today. Now, does that mean I want them as our uh, center back partnership in the future? No, absolutely not, because I think Godfrey and Mina are miles better, and it'll show once they actually get out there. But again, today, nothing bad to say about Michael Keane and Mason Holgate, and I, I hope they play like that every game, so I never have anything bad to say about them. So that's that. Um, I thought Seamus Coleman was great today as well, you know, Coleman being our captain, getting involved in the attacks. And again, by the way, Coleman won us a penalty. He won us the penalty kick. And guess who played him through? Alan again. Alan with a beautiful, like again, Alan with just a beautiful through ball in. Seamus Coleman gets him, gets the ball. He cuts to the box. He gets fouled. It's 100% a penalty. You know, John Moss doesn't need, the referee doesn't need to look twice, points to the penalty spot immediately. There's not too much arguing to be honest between players there really wasn't and you know coleman wins us a penalty again all set up by alan picking him out through the through ball uh joel veltman was the brighton defender that fouled coleman really silly challenge you know that was that but uh, th- you know there was more fight amongst the everton players and the brighton players on the penalty for the sole fact that you know we are going to talk about this richarlison you know richarlison and i love richarlison again i i i literally Every video that I've made, I've been wearing his jersey, and I will continue to wear his jersey until James Rodriguez comes back and plays for us, which, again, we'll get into that later. But, you know, I love Richarlison, but in my opinion, I thought Richarlison was the worst player on the pitch for Everton today. I don't think he had all that of a fantastic game. He really didn't. He just didn't have a good game today. Thought he was the worst player on the pitch. But, you know, he has – so when we win the penalty, right – He has the ball in his hand. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, does Richarlison want to take this penalty? Because last penalty Calvert-Lewin took, and he absolutely smashed it home, and it was fantastic. Now, look, I don't mind Richarlison taking penalties, okay? I don't care if DCL takes penalties. I don't care if Richarlison takes penalties. I think they're both very reliable penalty kick takers. But throughout the week, it was made known that Dominic Calvert-Lewin was our number one set piece. Well, when it comes to penalties, Calvert-Lewin's the penalty taker. So when I saw Richardson having, I'm like, oh, well, maybe Calvert Lewin's letting him have it. But then I realized, no, that wasn't the case at all because Andros Townsend comes over to Richardson and he's talking about, he's like, hey, no, 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 Calvert Lewin's taking it. You know, you got to give him the pen. And I thought it was good by Calvert Lewin to stay out of it. You know, he stayed out of it. You know, just letting his teammates talk to Richardson into giving him the ball. Good move by Calvert Lewin. But yeah, so you know, Townsend is going, and he Townsend actually slaps the ball out of Richardson's hand. And then another Everton player comes to him. Was it Damari Gray? I forgot if, if, it was, if it was Damari Gray, but eventually Seamus Coleman, who was getting you know checked out uh, for injury, he comes over to Richarlison as the captain. And he's like, hey, no, 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 no. You know Calvert-Lewin's the penalty taker. So again, again I, I think it was Gray who was another. But either way, we, we had three Everton players telling Richarlison, you know, give up the penalty. Calvert-Lewin needs to take it. And you saw that look in Richarlison's eye. You saw his face. He was fuming. He was very, very upset, Richarlison, that, you know, he he really wanted that penalty really bad. And he was really mad. Well, no, he was really upset he didn't take it. Definitely upset he didn't take it, which I thought, you know, I, I, I get it. But at the same time, you're putting a lot of pressure on Dominic Calvert Lewin. You know, that puts it's just unadded pressure, you know. That's that's something in Everton I never want to see again. I don't ever want to see Everton players fighting over who gets to take the pen again. You have your designated penalty kick taker. You stick with them unless they themselves say, here you go. You have it. You take it. You don't argue because, again, it just puts on so much unnecessary pressure, which made me very nervous for Calvert-Lewin taking this penalty because of how upset Richarlison was. You know, that kind of stuff has an effect on a team. So then, you know, referee blows his whistle. 
Um, you know, I'm dying to see what happens. And then Calvert Lewin, just like he did last time around, very quick, short step up, oh, run up, run up. It's a run up, very short, quick run up, and he smashes it into the bottom corner. Keeper dives the right way, but phew, doesn't matter. Too much pace and power on it, makes it 2 0, you know. And Richarlison gets in on the celebration as well. And I'm sure Calvert Lewin talked to him in the celebration and said, Hey, you know, thank you. You're good. You're all right, which is good. Class act by him. But yeah, when we went up 2 0, I honestly thought, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna be fine. We're gonna cruise the West rest of the way. I don't see Brighton getting back into this, and they really didn't. They didn't do anything too threatening to really get back in the game. We launched a couple of counterattacks as well. Um, eventually, uh, Iwobi Iwobi came on for Calvert Lewin because I think he picked up a knock in the match, so I hope he's okay. And then Andre Gomez came on for Damari Gray. Um, I don't really have too much to say about Andre Gomez. I don't really think he was on the pitch too long to say much i don't think he had too much of an impact he was kind of whatever type thing uh he looked a bit sharp though i'll give him that uh iwobi i thought iwobi was fine again i mean alex iwobi has actually been playing decent football so again i thought he was fine although i do think you know iwobi had chances to make it three nil at at some points and unfortunately it didn't pan our way although he did lay one off to richarlison and richarlison just missed the net completely again not a good day for richarlison but um yeah, you know, I thought Iwobi was fine coming on. So, hey, keep it up. And slowly but surely, my opinion for you, Iwobi, will slowly, slowly change. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. You have to have extreme consistency for me and a lot of Evertonians to be convinced that, okay, maybe Alex Iwobi does have a lot more to offer than the squad than what he's shown in the past, like, two seasons or so because he's been awful. He, he really has. But so far this season, he's been good. He's been all right. So that's that. But, yeah, um, again, I'm glad Calvert-Lewin got his goal. It's like three and three for him now at this point. Uh, again, Townsend was good. Damari Gray was excellent. Alan was excellent. Those two, I they, – they were fantastic, weren't they? They were, you know, superb. I actually thought Lucas Dean had an okay game. Like, out of all the defenders – Lucas Dean, I thought, in my opinion, was the one who had like the worst game. And again, all the defenders were good, but I'm just saying if I had to pick one from best to worst, you know, it'd be like Coleman Keen, Holgate, Ty, and then Dean. You know what I mean? So it's kind of weird thinking about that, but yeah, that's good. It, it, it's good. You know, it's, it's good. I'm just happy the defense was solid today for a solid, again, 2 0 victory. And then, uh, yeah, my man of the match, by the way, I should start doing this more. My man of the match was Alan. That was my man of the match. If you saw the game or you know, want to check it out or whatever, you could tell me who you thought your man of the match was as well. I'm going with Alan because, you know, he helped set up both of our goals today. And he was he was just fantastic. And, you know, just keep it up. That's all I got to say. Um. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, yeah, again, that's all I have to say about the match. Very happy with the road victory. And our next match will be against Burnley, Sean Dyche's Burnley, which is going to be a very difficult match for us. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to talk about that when that comes. So moving on then, moving on then from the Everton game, as again, I'll say it one more last time, final score was 2-0, good road victory, good solid victory, putting us, as I'm currently saying this, around fourth, fifth in the table. But moving on to Everton transfer news and rumors, okay? And again, every time I tell you guys transfer rumors, it's as of what I know right now. As of what I know of me recording this video right now is what I know of the transfer rumors going on at Everton. So let's start. So Everton want to sign Ainsley Maitland-Niles from Arsenal on a season-long loan, according to Sky Sports. This makes sense to me because, again, like I've been saying, we need a, a new right back, and Ainsley Maiden Niles would come in as like a cover for a right back. I think he's better than John Joe Kenny, so that's an automatic upgrade, and he would definitely help out Seamus Coleman. But unfortunately for Everton, I don't see us getting Ainsley Maitland Niles on loan, even though he would be a decent squad player, a you know, good cover for right back, because Arsenal need him more than we do. Oh my gosh. 
if by the way, if you don't know what's going on with Arsenal right now, if you have no clue what's going on with Arsenal Football Club, you need to look that shit up right now because it is an absolute shit show. It is a train wreck right now for Arsenal. They have not scored a single Premier League goal in their opening three matches. And they've conceded about, what is it, not eight? They've conceded over eight goals in their opening three games of the season, and they've scored none. They, they just got hammered by Manchester City 5-0 today. Hammered. I, I actually think they've conceded nine goals. I think Arsenal have conceded nine goals in three games in their opening you know, three games of the Premier League season. So, again, they're an absolute train wreck right now, Arsenal. So they're going to need Ainsley Maitland-Niles a lot more than us for cover of anything to be completely fair. So I don't see the move happening solely because of that freaking arsenal, man. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So apparently uh, Salomon Rondon remains hopeful that Rafa Benitez will make a late move for him with Benitez wanting an experienced striker to support Dominic Calvert-Lewin. This is according to the Liverpool echo. Now I would take Salomon Rondon because I'm pretty sure he would know his role as a backup striker an experienced backup to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I rate him higher than Neil Mope. He's definitely better than Neil Mope, okay? So I'm already happy with that. And I wouldn't mind Rondon coming to Everton. Wouldn't mind him coming to the club. I thought he was really good at his time with West Brom. And actually, when, when Solomon Rondon was in the Premier League, by the way, before he moved to the Chinese League, and he was with West Brom, which I'll be him, again, I actually want, I, I, during one of his seasons there, I actually wanted Everton to snatch him up and sign him because I thought, oh, this guy, you know, he's, he's doing quite well for him. So getting him now, again, I know he's a little bit older, but again, experience as a backup for Calvert-Lewin, I think Rondon would be a really good fit. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. You know, we'll see what happens. Um. And I'll, I'll actually mention Rondon a bit later when I get to Moise Keane. But right now, we're going to move on a little bit. So the next one. Everton are confident on completing an agreement with Porto to sign Luis Diaz. Talks are progressing on a permanent deal while James Rodriguez is expected to join Porto if wages can be agreed. This is according to Fabrizio Romano, who I do believe Fabrizio Romano is actually a pretty reliable source. So anything Fabrizio Romano says, um, I actually like believe a decent amount of time. Cause I'm like, Oh, well he's been right a lot uh, to be quite fair to him. So yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. Like, again, I would love to see Luis Diaz at Everton. I think he's class. I rate him highly. I think he would be a great addition to add to our wingers, especially, especially depth wise, you know, I, yeah, very talented footballer, Luis Diaz. And um I mean, if Porto can agree with James Rodriguez's wages, which are a lot, by the way, then yeah, I mean, this would be fantastic. You know, swap deal and whatnot. I'm again, I think Rodriguez would only go well, well, permanent deal, I guess. But again, I don't know if Porto can afford to pay James Rodriguez's wages. I think that's the only main problem here. But again, if they can, and Luis Diaz is on his way, James Rodriguez is out. Again, I don't mind it. James doesn't seem to really want to play for Everton ever since Ancelotti left. So you know, yeah, again, no matter how big of a player you are, and I love James Rodriguez, but if you don't want to play for Everton Football Club, then it's literally in your best interest and Everton's best interest that you move to a different club. And again, if we give James Rodriguez to Porto and they give us, you know, a young, electric, very highly rated wing, young winger in return, I'm taking it all day. You know, I'm I'm taking it all day. And again, Diaz would be fantastic for us. Would he, he really would? So um yeah, that's that. That is that. Um, and then the last one, last transfer rumor for, for today. Uh Moise Keane to Juventus is a done deal. Oh, look at that. Uh, an agreement with Everton for a loan with an obligation to buy under certain conditions. The total potential feel of the, the total potential fee of around 20 million euros, which is absolute dog shite. It should be at least 30 million euros. 20 million is not enough. It's nowhere near enough money on what Moise Keen should be worth. Again, 30 million minimum. It is shocking to me that it's only 20. 
that's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, but Moiskin, he has landed in Torino to complete a two-year loan move with a potential buy obligation to Juventus. Again, this is according to Fabrizio Romano. And this is why I think this is actually probably true because Moise Keane was not on Everton's bench today. And again, if he spotted landing in Italy a couple of days ago in the transfer deadline, you know, with Juventus, then yeah, th- this is all probably true, but a two year loan move with the potential to buy obligation. Yeah. There better be a buy obligation. If he's on loan there two years again, I don't want a loan deal period obligation to buy. Fuck all. Look, I, I don't want a loan move for Moise Keane. Okay. I want, a, I want a buy right away. You know, I want the money now. I want Everton to get the money now in case, you know, we make a last late minute bid for a decent right back. So we have the money. Even Luis Diaz, we have the money. Again, right back should be our number one priority. But apparently with all this other crap going on, you know, yeah, I, I need the Moise Keen money now. We need the Moise Keen money now, not later. I want it now. So I'm not happy with this. If this goes through and it's a two-year loan deal with an obligation to buy and Juventus doesn't have to pay us the money immediately, if they don't pay us the money immediately, I'm, I'm just going to be upset with the transfer altogether. Uh, I'll be happy for Moise Keane, though, because ever since he came to Everton, I never it never seemed that he actually wanted to play for Everton. I'm pretty sure me, along with a lot of Evertonians, got that vibe from him. I mean, his Everton career has been awful, let's be honest. His Everton career has been an absolute stinker of a show. It, it really has. And again, I think it's in his best interest to move on to a different club and change scenery. And I think it's Everton's best interest to, well, let him go to a different club. We don't really need Moid Skeen. I know he's a young, hot, European, Italian prospect who's going to be really good in the future. I think he's going to be excellent in the future, but sometimes the club's not right. And for Moise Keane, I guess Everton's just not the right club for him. And as far as I'm concerned right now, we just don't need him. DCL has been great. So yeah, that's that. But uh, yeah, again, with Moise Keane going, then that's probably going to open the door for Salomon Rondon's transfer to potentially fall through again. Transfer day deadline is in a couple of days and we're just going to have to wait to see what happens then other than that again as far as i know that's the latest everton transfer news and stories that i've heard and read and again i listed your sources as well if you want to fact check me but anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me to another episode uh honestly i don't really have anything to say about the big football clubs of the world at the moment i really don't again ronaldo to man united the other day was like the biggest thing that happened and no one really asked me to talk or say about anything the big clubs but you know that's okay but that's what i'm saying ladies and gentlemen again if you're enjoying these videos and if you enjoy this video please 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 leave a like it really helps the channel out and please subscribe if you haven't already turn on your bell notification so you don't miss a video that really helps out as well and it really it means the world to me when you do and again leave in the comments below you know what you think of all this everton stuff whether you're an everton fan or not and again if you're If you want me to talk about any other big clubs in the world of football, you can even tell me, hey, what about international? I'll talk about international teams as well. Leave it down in the comments below. Josh, what do you think of this? Josh, could you talk about this the next episode? And I will gladly do it for you. All you have to do is comment. And also, please spread the word about the JP Football Podcast if you are enjoying it. It helps the channel out massively. And once we get more people, I can start doing interviews with local stars so you don't miss them. This is something you're not going to want to miss out on. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you again so much for joining me on this episode of the JP Football Podcast. And until next time.